Weencast, a ween podcast with Shane and Rory. Hey, what's up? This is Shane. And this is Rory. And this is Weencast. And we welcome you to a new episode. Back to back, baby. That's right. Back to back. So happy holidays to everybody. And we are doing another episode of the recent Philadelphia Met shows. Hell yes. So this will be for December 11th, 2021, the Metropolitan Opera House in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yes. Tonight we're going to be talking about Saturday night. (laughs) Philadelphia, North Broad Street. So we got a few things to say before we dive right in. You want to go down some of the thank yous? Shout outs? Yeah, man. Totally. Well, we, we want to give a shout out to Sean, who uh, wound up purchasing my ticket because I made the decision not to go. So we want to give him a huge shout out and thank you. We want to say thank you to Seamus, who streamed the show on Facebook. He actually been doing a lot of streaming for, I don't know if it was all of the 2021 shows, but a lot of them. So huge shout out to him. Um, I know there's been a, a great outpouring of appreciation for him on Facebook. So Yeah, dude, it's like a whole new world, <laughs> you know, and it like really brings people in. If you can't get in, you know, as big as these venues are, not everyone gets a ticket and it's cool that people can still participate from home. Yeah, totally, man. There was a a new service and a, and a new person that I, I found out about that first night, which was... Um, Boognish Worldwide on a, a new platform to me anyway called Mixler, M-I-X-L-R, for live streaming both nights. Really nice, high-quality audio that just went uninterrupted for both nights. So that was so fucking sick. So thank you to him. Yeah. And um, shout out to everyone that's posting on YouTube, especially uh, Colleen for uploading both nights to Boognish Monster on YouTube. She just, uh, I think, just got done with these two nights and also the Maryland show over the last few days. So they're all up on uh, on playlists on YouTube, so you can listen to both of these show and the, both of these shows and the Maryland show. So huge shout out to her. Totally, and also let's not forget the Stallion Mang because he's got some video on YouTube. And yeah, and then I also like always love to give a shout out to Brown Base. If you're a Ween fan, you should be on brownbase.org. It makes looking at the numbers and comparing set lists and appreci- and fully appreciating the evening, it allows you to do that. So get on Brown Base, Brown Base rules. Yeah, we use Brown Base like every day. So, I mean, just huge shout out, amazing site. So yeah, dude, and without further ado, I say we turn our attention to the Metropolitan Opera House in Philadelphia, PA. Is your cutting board dried out, ugly, and lacking luster? Do your tables have too many water rings to count and need a fix? Are your kitchen utensils old and damaged? Maybe you just want to add a little bit of natural wood beauty to your home. Whatever it is, you can count on West Brandywine Woodworks to provide for you. We make high-quality custom hardwood items for your home. From cutting boards to shelving, West Brandywine Woodworks has you covered. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. Mention Weencast when you order for 21% off. So give us a like and a follow, and don't forget to mention Weencast for 21% off your order. West Brandywine Woodworks. Custom simplicity for your home. Hey, all you Weencast listeners. We just want to take a moment to wish everyone a happy holiday. We wish everyone all the love for a bright and hopeful new year. Here at Weencast, it's been an awesome year. To say thank you to all you listeners, we're putting some gifts under the Christmas tree for you. That's right, on Christmas Eve, we're dropping all kinds of content on you for the holidays. On the podcast, we'll be doing a double release for the recent Philly Met shows. And over on Patreon, we're hooking up our loyal patrons with three, count them, three new episodes. A Shane's Ween Vinyl, talking about the seven-inch single Even If You Don't with Cornbread Red on the B-side. Rory rambles on about seeing Amandla at Lucky's in Eugene, Oregon. 
and we also drop an in-depth write-up as well as videos from the pit for the pair of recent Philly Met shows. And all this is coming at you Christmas Eve, yo. Be hyped and be typed. Thanks, Thanks again, again for, for listening. listening. And may, and may your, your holidays, holidays be brown. brown. But yeah, so anyway, I slept in. We slept in, which was cool. I think I got up at like 9 o'clock, which is like the latest I've slept in a long time. I probably. <laughs> so that was really cool. And then that was funny because actually shortly after that is when I realized that we could see the marquee from our window because it was kind of a dark and overcast day. And just looking north on Broad, we were on the 18th floor of the hotel. So we were just a block north of City Hall. Right. Well, anyway, Amy and I get on, we're on the, the Broad Street line, heading north, and it's funny because, and I never caught his name, so if you're listening, dude, drop me a line. What's your name? What's your game? <laughs> Here we go. But uh, along with the posters the night before, I had purchased one of the beanie hats uh, that says Ween on it, so I was at this point representing, so this kid sees me. So he, he, he sits in front of us, oh, going to the Ween show, which of course we're like, yeah, yeah. And, and he, you know, I think was excited because he just wouldn't stop talking kind of, but it was funny. You know, he was just excited to be there and he, I, he had never seen Ween before. And, and I apologize, dude, if you're listening, that I, if, I, if I don't get the, your story exactly right, but I'm trying to remember the evening. And he was like, oh, I've only been to a few shows this big, you know, so I guess he usually goes to small shows. And I don't think he was much older than his early 20s, if even that old, but he was eager to get there. And, and then he starts bitching about how expensive the tickets were because he got it last minute on StubHub. None of his friends wanted to go, but last minute on, Hub, on StubHub for nosebleed tickets way in the top are like 80 bucks. And I reassured him that like, dude, there's, there's not a bad seat in the house. Right. Anyway, he's like, oh, I got to spend 80 bucks, blah, blah, blah. And of course, I didn't tell him at the time, but like, sorry, bro, we got our pre-sale. We came out about 60 bucks each. I don't know what to tell you, bro. I'm in the pit. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, then you shouldn't have waited till the last minute, dude. Like, uh, what do you want me to say? And now he's like blabbing away. So we almost missed getting off the subway. And then we're like climbing out of the subway. And I guess he'd never been up to Broad, up Broad Street. He'd never been to the venue. He's just like, oh, which way you go? Which way you go? And I'm just trying to get my bearings. <laughs> he keeps like, where, which way you go? Which way you go? And I was like, oh, you go this way, you know? And he's just like, well, I'm just following you guys. And, just think, and I'm thinking like, I don't know why you're following us, but that's cool. But anyway, it was just funny. And then we finally get, get into the venue and I'm getting my ticket out on the, um, the phone, you know, the mobile app. And and he's like, oh, where do you go to get in? Where are you going? And I'm just like, dude, I'm trying to take care of my thing here. <laughs> so I think he found his way and like got in. Uh, and I'm not trying to rib you too hard, bro. <laughs> but I hope you had a great time at your first Ween show. But anyway, so I'm at this point, Amy and I get in line. And I'm trying to pull up my, I have my ticket pulled up. And then it's like at that little link where you say, click the barcode. And then it's like, error, won't come up. So, so Amy just goes right through and gets the metal detector, all that shit. She's in the lobby. But then I'm showing the lady and she can't scan my barcode. So I'm like, well, here's my ticket. She's like, you got to go to will call. So the will call line was longer and shittier, which was kind of a bummer. Anyway, it ended up working out. I think they start right around 830. And I got in there maybe like two minutes before they started. Wow. It ended up being like perfect timing. Right, right. In right. that sense. So it wasn't like I had to sit around and wait. Right. So you still got to see the beginning of it. Yes. I didn't miss any of the show. And we basically were in about the same spot first night. And I guess comparing it to the first night, it seemed a little more packed at first. Okay. We I definitely the first night seemed more open. And I don't know if it was just because more people were trying to push up closer in the pit or whatever, but... There's definitely, it was tighter confines in the second day. And sort of a reverse shout out to, to a dude. There was like a dude that was, and I first off, am facetious about the reverse shout out. I hope you, got, <laughs> I hope you made it out alive, bro. But there was this dude that I swear was like six foot six, 320 pounds or something. Big fucking man. And he was boozing on some uh, mixed drinks. And he was just swaying to and fro. 
And he was very jovial and in light would chat with everyone around. And he actually spoke to me and he said, you know, more or less almost like an apology in a way, like in advance for his, you know, for potential future behavior. Well, he ended up eventually sort of a little bit after a few songs sort of stumbling into further into the pit. And I just remember leaning over to Amy and just being like, that dude's going to get kicked out. <laughs> so I hope you ended up okay and, you know, and didn't like pass out or something. Yeah. Because the show was like, we weren't even, the show had just started and this dude was like, so it was just kind of funny, but whatever. <laughs> One thing I did want to mention that I realized I didn't mention for the first night, but it was present both nights. Right in front of us, it turns out, is where the hearing impaired translators stand to do the show. I had never been to a show where, at least that I noticed, where I got to see and had such a close-up view of the people doing the sign language. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. So I've seen, you know, you see clips online and stuff like that about the ones that do like all this amazing stuff and like they emote every move and really get into it like it's a big dance. Mm -hmm. And they were brilliant. They were brilliant. I am going to hunt down their names because I was just too weird and, and I don't know. Sometimes I get weird in public. <laughs> Full disclosure. <laughs> I, but I do want to track down their names because they deserve to be thanked personally. They were awesome. It was like, there were several songs where I really just watched them translate it into sign language instead of watching the band. It was that cool. Did you get the impression that they knew Ween songs ahead of time? They definitely had to have rehearsed on some level. I don't know if they're Ween heads or not. I'm presuming that they are part of the venue. They're hired by the venue. Okay. That would make sense, yeah. And so... They were definitely, they, there was like a guy and, a, and a, there's a man and a woman and they kind of alternated. They would do like a series of songs and the other person, you know, they'd go like 30 minutes. And the other person would go 30 minutes or however long it was. I wasn't timing it. And they definitely were helping each other. So like it's not like the other person would just disappear. They would like be right off the, to the side. And I could tell that between songs, they would be having conversations that were like about how to do it. And you could see them practicing sort of out like, hmm, what's this? Or what's your, what's your thought? And like, it's really interesting because I know just a little bit of sign language, really not a lot. And it's just, it's amazing to me, mm -hmm. you know, sort of the opportunity to help people that aren't able to hear better enjoy and understand what's happening at the show. And so, and, 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 if, and everyone out there, just imagine Ween... And think about the crazy lyrics. Think about the raunchy Diener songs. Think about the deep, mystical Aaron, you know, uh, Giener uh, lyrics. Like, think about the jams and, like, all the ridiculous stuff. And then think about someone trying to sign all of that, you know? But, yeah, so that was just really neat. So sure, just yeah. shout, just, just a huge shout-out of appreciation to, to them. Huge shout-out. That's really cool, man. So should we get to the set list for the second night? So this is Saturday night. Yeah, dude, Saturday night. You want to go ahead and do the set list? Sure, yeah. Okay. Did you see me? She wanted to leave with my own bare hands, get a little taste of you, the grobe, waving my dick in the wind, common bitch, even if you don't, boing, can you taste the waste, voodoo lady, happy colored marbles, the stallion part three, up on the hill, pork roll egg and cheese, push a little daisies, she's your baby, stay forever, Dr. Rock, sweet Texas fire, I'll be your Johnny on the spot, spring theme, the stallion part five, Gabrielle, the Argus, bananas and blow, the HIV song, tender situation, the going gets tough from the get go, take me away, the enabler, ocean man, Fluffy, and then for the encore, Fiesta, Mr. Would You Please Help My Pony, and I'm Holding You. Shoot. Oh, man. It just keeps going, man. It just keeps going. And that countrified feeling 
that I talked about for Friday night Mm -hmm. is still running through this one. Yeah, man. You know, you still got some of that, that feeling. It's just, it's interesting artistic choices. Dude, and, and yet again, just like night one, a ton of rarities. 16 songs that come in at under 100 times played. So, I mean, everywhere you look, it's, it's, a, it's an uncommon or a rare song at this show. It's really awesome. Yeah, man. So, yeah, I mean, to get right into it, uh, did you see me? First off, it's only 87 times, so that's pretty rare. And then I was checking on Brown Bays, and that's like the 15th time it was used as an opener. So that's pretty cool. Because, you know, like songs like The Mollusk, which was the opener for Night One, is a way more common song as an opener. I think it's been used as an opener five or six times more often. You know, so that's kind of cool. And also... That just told me right away that, hell yeah, this night's going to be just as brown as the night before. Absolutely, man. You know, the one thing I will say, and I'm not trying to criticize or anything, but did you see me as an opener into she wanted to leave? I felt like it got a little bit of like a slow start. And, um, you know, one of the things I noticed listening along to it at home was it did kind of seem like at the beginning of the show, like... They had to sort of get, like, the crowd, like, riled up a little bit. You know what I mean? Which kind of makes sense because it's night two and you have to think, like, there was definitely a decent amount of people who were there both nights. Not everybody, but, you know, so people are going to be kind of wiped from the night before and, you know what I mean? It seemed like there was a little bit more in the first, I don't know, ten songs or so that they're like, come on, Philly! You know, they're sort of like, all right, let's go, let's wake up, come on. Night number two, get, let's 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 get it going. <laughs> yeah, no, and this show has a good mix actually of like the hard rock and then also the more mellow stuff. Oh, absolutely! I can tell you from being there that the crowd was definitely seemed to be rowdier this night, uh, at least from our vantage point. Okay, not that it was ever crazy out of control, but it definitely seemed like. People were having a little bit more fun tonight. Well, I think technically, if I remember correctly, I think between the two nights, I think Saturday was like officially sold out and maybe Friday night wasn't. I don't know that for sure. Maybe like when it was actually uh, time for the show, maybe both nights were actually sold out. But I think Saturday was like officially sold out ahead of time for sure. Mm -hmm. So anyway. Yeah. And so... And then, you know, it's awesome because With My Own Bare Hands comes on number, is the third song. And that's not really a rarity, but um, another little Cucaracha tune. Mm -hmm. That's just also like that ridiculous kind of raunchy (laughs) Diener Diener tune. (laughs) Another rarity that I actually think is a great little song is uh, Get a Little Taste of You. Oh my God. Z-Rock Hawaii, man. Yes. dude z rock is the fucking shit i mean i i love the fact that they've been playing this since they've you know been back and uh i I, i'd like to see some more shit from fucking z rock hell yeah yeah dude getting some z rock representing you know one of the things um a little tangent these two shows they everything's represented yeah good call all the albums all the albums are represented the Shinola, the Friends EP, the unreleased B-sides, you know, like every like category of 
or Z Rock. You know, every like sort of album or like recording or where something could come from is represented in these two shows. Like they're drawing from everywhere. You know, so that's really awesome. Absolutely. I was thinking that for both nights as I was listening along. Hell yeah, dude. Another rarity they played was Common Bitch, which has mm-hmm. only been 39 times. You know, it's funny. I was listening to it, <laughs> re-listening to the show, uh, you know, to kind of get ready to, to chat with you. Right. And it just sort of came across to me that that's sort of like a, like a ripoff of Tick. <laughs> <laughs> And instead of saying, tick, 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 it's, come in, bitch, come in, bitch. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of interesting that it's like the the rare version of tick. Right. <laughs> it's the not as good version of tick, basically. Dude, but what totally blows everything out of the water is boing. You know, I I definitely would not have picked up on it, except I think like immediately another shout out to uh, Colleen from Boognish Monster. I think she had posted on Facebook like right after they played that that night, first time since 1994. That's amazing. Yeah, dude. I mean, you're talking the entire fucking you know 2000s. They didn't play that at all. Yeah, dude. And that's before we started listening to Ween. Yeah, right. Exactly. That's before our first fucking first show. And, you know, hey, it is what it is, but it's just kind of one of those things where it's like you're you're looking at the stats and it's like, holy shit, man. You know? So and, and it's another song from it's a short little ditty, but it's it's another part of the pod. And you know how people are about the fucking pod. It's 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 fanat people are fanatical when it comes to the pod. You know, so Another another pod song represented. It's a uh, crazy cool little song, and um, you know, almost almost thirty years since it was played last. It's just really wild, and especially, you know, if you look at these two set lists, every other song, even though many of them are really rare, they've all been played already this year. They they've all been brought back into rotation this year, and Boeing is the only one from these two nights that they brought back from way back right for this night Mm -hmm. you know like like boing is and then what's it total 17 times so it's like and not one since 1994 nuts dude so you're talking about you know that's just wild dude that's wild yeah yeah man and you know i swear i remember hearing them go boing on in like shows I've been at, but either it was just a tease or somewhere else in the ween multiverse, they say boing. Cause I don't know. Yeah. It was probably just a couple of little like teases for it or little, you know, references to it here and there, you know, I swear somewhere in the, in the, in the, in the ether out there, I thought I heard it, but maybe it was just me listening to the pod. I don't know. Right. But yeah, that's totally like a, a, a definitely a big highlight for the evening, as it were. Can You Taste the Waste is like more of a tease, but I guess we'll count it. It's like a minute long. <laughs> yeah, we didn't say that these were long jams or anything like that, but they're official. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we'll, we'll, it, it counts. It counts. It, it, but nevertheless, dude, that was the fourth time nuts bro ever played live i mean that's crazy nuts to go from a song that hadn't been played in 28 years to a song that had only been played three times before right i mean that's amazing and like it's funny that they just sort of try to figure out how to play it quick you know like before the show or something and so it just goes on for like a minute and it's funny diener's like best song we ever wrote and it's a good song too actually like i'm not dissing it uh, but he's joking. He's like, oh, best song we ever wrote. And then after a minute, he's like, want to hear it again? We'll close with it. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Right, which of course doesn't happen. Because it only goes on for like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess come to think of it, Boeing's pretty short too. But Yeah, but it's still fun to get some of those old songs that just never, you know, never amounted to anything. You know, bring them back to life, you know? Yeah, totally. You know, another really awesome highlight is Up on the Hill. Mm-hmm. And that's cool because I hadn't heard that myself. The last time I heard that live, and this might be true for you too, dude, July 21st in 2000 at the Pittsburgh, in the Metropole in Pittsburgh. Well, and this is a good example when you listen to this night of how they're really having fun because it's really different. And Giner is just going off on up on the hill, down by the river. You know, he's just yeah. completely all over the place with it. You know, he's give fucking give a fuck, you know? And, and, and Diener, Giner and Dave all go up a cappella for the first half of that. And they're all on a mic by themselves. But shoo, wadu, wadu, you know, yeah. up on a hill, you know, like the whole thing's going down. It's, it's great. It's a lot of fun. In a tree, said it was coming. Boom, there's a rally up right and that just was wild you know i know it's been played since then but i hadn't seen it live since 2000 at the metropole so that was pretty wild i thought that was and that was like a fantastic little um little highlight yeah that's nuts man Again, this these shows, man, just so much like cool shit, you know, just really appreciating all the all the rarities, you know, um, sweet Texas fire. Yeah, dude. Thirty three times total. Yeah. You know, it's funny because, again, it, it was played at least a few times earlier the same year, but it was played at, um, I believe, The Conduit 2002. Yeah, it definitely was at the conduit. I don't know if um Yeah, dude. You know, I think maybe we might have saw it like once between then. You're talking that's going back to 2002. No, I'm pretty sure that's the this is the first time I ever heard it myself. So you've heard it before, but that's what's cool is that goes back to 2002, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. So that's cool. But no, dude, that's um I checked and the songs that I never heard live before were Boing, Can You Taste the Waste? And Sweet Texas Fire. So those are the three songs from this show that were new to me live. So one of those is Sweet Texas Fire. That's cool. No, and that's funny. You know, it's funny because, again, it's one of the raunchy Diener songs. And I love them dearly. (laughs) But it's funny. There's a line in there that I pulled out. And he's like, oh, I I guess I didn't finish writing it all out there. It's like your boyfriend's 25. And your dad thinks he's a punk. Drinking your drink and getting all drunk. And I'm just thinking, like, this shit writes itself, dude. (laughs) (laughs) You know? Like, that's so fucking hilarious. Yeah. It's it's a good one. It's a good one. (laughs) Diener's got a great solo in the song. The song, you know, it's like a raunchy cast off, you know? But then he just rips off this, like, amazing country solo. Like, countrified solo in the middle of it. Another countrified song, you know? Like, in Mm -hmm. that whole, like, you know, sub- sub theme yeah it's a country record outtake it's a country record b-side it was from the piss up a rope single yeah totally yeah yeah yeah, absolutely and then what else are the cool highlights man dude it's one after the other for these shows it's pretty pretty awesome she's your baby followed by stay forever that's pretty yes. fucking cool from white pepper but you know both of those are not very common you know what I mean? Yeah, I wouldn't dude. go so far as to call them rare, but I mean, she's your baby 64 times and stay forever 51. And back to back like that, you know, one after the other like that, it's like, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, 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 dude. And I skipped, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead of Sweet Texas Fire, but yeah, dude, no, to have them back to back is a really sweet little like part of the set. And um, just for clarification, dude, I use Advanced Dungeons and Dragons frequency rules. So... I think it's roughly about 11% frequency makes something rare. And then like 4% makes it very rare. So when you're coming in at 64, that's like right between rare and very rare. (laughs) 
<laughs> on a D hundred, like on a D hundred. Yeah. What? See, once again, I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, dude, no, that's a sweet spot. And stay forever. Um, we were just doing our favorite song, the contest, and that was the song. I that's mine. I mm-hmm. love that song, and she's your baby's beautiful too. So yeah, it was cool. And the show, the show wasn't totally mellow, but I think this show maybe is a little bit more mellow than the night before. You know, looking at it, it's like with my own bare hands, the grobe. I guess waving my dick in the wind is is up tempo. Voodoo Lady's a big jam, but it's a little bit of a mellow show. Doctor Rock's in there. I'll be your Johnny on the spot is jammed out. That's for sure. Yeah, man. I noticed that too. Great fucking sick jam on that. Yeah, dude. It's like, um, I was saying it earlier, Diener is just like speed metal. And it just goes on for minutes and minutes and minutes. They're in the zone. And I think I was actually videotaping Dave on this song. And he was just like playing the couple notes, boom, 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 like on the bass, like over and over and over and again for over and over and over and over. And I think he was just leaning back and his, his eyes were closed and he was just like in like a zone, just like droning away at this bass. And Diener's just like going endless speed metal jamming. Like it was intense, dude. Fuck yeah, man. I mean, like watching that live, dude, just like grooving to it was mm-hmm. awesome. And then one of my favorites, and this is a something, you know, the second night had a lot of my like favorites. And spring theme. Oh. Great pick. Yeah, dude, that's a great song live. It's really just like this chill, like funky jam. Oh, it's good. Whenever you hear like the in- the beginning of that, the intro to that, it's like, yeah. Yeah, dude, absolutely. You're totally right. That intro is great. And that's only been played, that was the 69th time. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty rare. Mm-hmm. So that's always good. And that was jammed out. Stallion Part 5. Yep. But a big highlight for me is always the Argus. Yep. Spot on again. You know what I mean? Like, because that's one, you know, we, I think we talked about that on, on one of our, our last uh, episodes because that was sort of like a new song for the time we were talking about, um, you know, the Quebec era. But mm-hmm. it has like a lot of different pieces. And it's just like, you know, hey man, they can hit all of those different parts and it's just... It's tight and it's spot on absolutely for this night. Yeah. And it's a little bit longer than the studio. So it's a little bit, you know, kind of jammed out. Um, and I want to say I've seen it only four or five times live. So, so I love it. It's, and, it's, and, and the Argus is one of my favorite songs. And it's a great reppin' for Quebec. Because, if, if, you know, now that I think about it, Quebec may not be so heavily represented in these two shows as it may normally be, but I guess the Argus and uh, Chocolate Town and uh, Happy Colored Marbles, uh, Transdermal Celebration for these two nights. So it's a little bit, but it's not, because sometimes you get a lot at Quebec, you know, Zoloft and everything. No Zoloft this weekend. Um, Tender Situation, dude. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's one of my favorite songs. Beautiful. Yeah, and that um that featured like a weird like water effect when 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 Jeaner was sa- when he said the word waste. Yeah, man. It would be like waste, <laughs> waste, something yeah. like that. I'm I'm not doing it right. Waste. It was like um. Well, you describe it. You had a great way of describing it. Basically, it reminded me of section in Creep Show with Ted Danson and uh, Leslie Nielsen. Where he uh, uh, buries the people in the sand. Yeah, up to their head. Yeah, and then the tide comes in and they and they drown and then they come back as those like water zombies and they're just like you. That's what it sounded exactly like that. And I'm like, yeah, man, like it was like yeah, you did a better job of it. It, it was like creep show, man. It's like creep show shit, you know. Dude, I was like, damn, you know. 
That's a great callback because Creep Show is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and that first one is is um is great. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's from the first Creep Show. Yeah. Yes, it is the first Creep Show. So that was cool. And that's one of my favorite songs. So I always love hearing it live. And what's the count on that? 97. Yeah, so that's still pretty rare. And then The Enabler, which is awesome because that is actually not a Ween song. Mm -hmm. That is an instant death song. Dave Drywitz's band. Yeah. So that's so fucking cool that from time to time, Ween breaks it out and lets Dave shine. And this is really cool because after they finish the tune, which it is a really cool song too. After they finish it, Aaron is just like, that's right, Dave, instant death. So that's cool that he actually mentions that. Um, and it's a good tune. And, uh, and also, that's one that I hadn't heard live since the Metropole show in 2000. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Like, that's crazy coincidence that those two songs, for me, it's been that long. Yeah. 20, more than 20 years since I've heard those live. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty wild. It's nuts, man. But yeah, and then after Gina gives him the shout out, I was listening to it closely and he's like, Dave Drywitz, instant death. And then people kind of cheer for a second. And then he says, Scotty Burns. That was the other gentleman from instant death. It was the two, it was the two guys. It was him and Dave were instant death. And I think he's since passed on. So he gives him a, he gives him a shout out. So that's fucking cool that he brings up, you know, yeah his, his name and that, uh, that was an instant death tune. So that's fucking cool, man. Yeah. And then, um, you know, basically start to get toward the end. The main set wraps up with a long, awesome, fluffy. Dude, totally, man. I mean, it just feels so good. You know, Fluffy has been another one that's kind of like made a nice comeback uh, since the uh, since the hiatus. And like, it's just it's just so fucking sweet. Yeah, dude. It's awesome. It starts out, you know, just like and, and after at this point, again, you're almost two and a half hours into the show. So and this is the second night. So, man, I'm, I'm pretty tired at this point. I'm not a young man anymore. Full of vim and vigor. I ain't ashamed to say it. That's too, <laughs> that's too, but man, long we're kind of worn man. out at this point and I'm <laughs> yeah. jamming. I'm trying to do my white boy dancing, you know, and like, <laughs> and so Fluffy comes in and it gives you a chance. It starts out, it gives you a chance to be like introspective and sort of catch your breath. And I'm wearing this damn mask the whole time. So I'm actually, you know, it's kind of, that makes it harder on you in that big venue and you're trying to sing and dance and stuff. And, and it does start to kind of be a bummer, right. but I was trying to be safe, whatever. Yeah, and be respectful to other people around you. you yeah. yeah. And uh, and anyway, so by the time you get to Fluffy, it's kind of like a chance to sort of reflect on the evening and chill. And But then, you know, in the middle of that song, dude, you, it starts out by just being this kind of, you know, off kilter, off key kind of, hey, Fluffy on the porch, Penny got a Fluffy, you know, and then, but then in the middle of it, it turns into this epic fucking solo. And then it's just like, like Diener's just like blasting it off. And I swear to you, dude, is this the song? Is this not the song that Bill and Ted play to save the world? I mean, dude. <laughs> it should, it should have been, you know, <laughs> I mean, come on. Like the epicness of that solo is pretty much unrivaled in Weendom. It really is. It's up there. Well, you know, what's funny though is... When you're listening to this whole show back again, you know, it's like, well, how can they possibly top that? And then they do the encore. So it's Fiesta, Mr. Would You Please Help My Pony, and then I'm Holding You. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm Holding You. You know, they're different between Fluffy and I'm Holding You. But that is just like, oh, man. Yeah. 
more precious than fine ore. Baby, I'm holding you. I'll give you a little something. And like Junior kind of turns it into like a gospel kind of thing. Where it's just like, all right, now you got to sing with me. I'm flying. And then you hear the crowd yeah. flying. You know, it's just like, wow, man. Like, that's fucking sweet. Dude, that was really cool. Like, I'll be honest, Fiesta and Mr. Would You Please Help My Pony are a little bit more throwaway. Did they have the confetti for Fiesta? I don't think they had confetti for Fiesta. Boo. <laughs> now that, yeah, now that you're saying I don't, don't think so. But yeah, to have two country album songs really sandwich there because Fluffy and I'm Holding You are both like seven, eight minutes long or so. Like they're jammed out, you know? So I'm Holding You first off. Dude, this will blow your mind a little bit. The last time I heard that live was during the country tour in 1996. Yeah, I was going to say it might have been for me too. Yeah. That is so cool. And what a beautiful song. Well, you know what's interesting about both of those are perfect examples of how they can make them great with just the regular band. You know, it's like you don't need the country band. I'm not saying I wouldn't want to see the country players uh, with them live or anything like that. But I mean, it's like they're great renditions. And it's like, why weren't they just busting these out all through these years? You know, of all the years that those country songs were just sort of like abandoned, it's like, man, come on. Like, you guys could totally fucking nail these. And they, and they do. Yeah. You know, they have. Yeah. Yeah, over the course of both nights, the country album's pretty well represented. Totally, man. It really is. You know, you have Piss Up a Rope, which is a standard, which is common. But then th- the likes of Fluffy and I'm Holding You. Yeah, man. That was it, another great night. We, um... Basically, we're like, dude, we got to get back to the, the home. And so we just rocked out of there pretty quick. I guess the subway was shut down at Girard or something, or people were saying it. So we ended up walking down to the next subway stop. Then we got home and fucking basically passed out, I guess. It was another one where I was like, oh, I'll do the live from the hotel. And it was like, no, you're not. You just go to bed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Well, I mean, another night where, I mean, I remember, you know, listening to this as it was happening and kind of, you know, dipping in and out and then checking Brown Bass like as it was happening and it just kept getting updated and it just kept like songs just kept, you know, like filling up the page. It was just like song after song after song. So, you know, there again, it's like maybe not too many like extended jam outs, but this night actually has more songs than Friday night. So it's 36 songs. Yeah. So they're just, you know, they're just laying it down song after song after song with very short breaks in between. I think it might have been a little bit more relaxed in between, you know, like a little bit more time, like in between songs than Friday night Mm -hmm. because it started earlier and they kind of gave themselves a little bit more time. But 70 songs total between the two nights. So when you're talking about like song distribution basically between all of the different albums and stuff it's like hey 70 songs right that's like the equivalent of having like the mollusk white pepper chocolate and cheese and you know one of the other quebec you know it's like fuck dude like the so the songs are from all over the place of their entire career if you look at brown bass i think the only ones that are sort of like towards the bottom of the list are Godwin Satan and Quebec for both nights, because I want to say that both of them only had two for each night. That might not be completely accurate, but something like that. So it's just like the songs are from everywhere. Old songs, you know, later songs, B sides, rarities. I mean, it's just like, you know, Shinola. zero. Yeah, Shinola, fucking Z-Rock. I mean, like, so it's just like a complete, like, barrage of shit from the entire Ween catalog. 
And yeah, dude. I mean, yeah. just a, just amazing song selections, like overall. Well, a little bit of everything, you know. And so, this is really an awesome, a really good two night set. And here's the thing: this is not. I wouldn't recommend these for newbies because some of the extreme rarities are pretty brown and pretty deep into the brownness. Yeah, man. So like these shows are really definitive. This is, it kind of blows my mind. Yeah. I mean, I would agree with that. You know, I think one of the things we talked about earlier in the year when they sort of like came back from the pandemic, I mean, when they started playing shows again, and these are the first shows that either one of us had, you know, gotten to go to. But this is kind of like our, like, you know, year end recap, because these shows kind of became like, you know, everything and the kitchen sink, just like everything that they sort of like brought back to life from, you know, like older eras and stuff Yeah. for, for the year of 2021. And I have to say, I'm not trying to be critical or anything like that, but I, I do kind of feel like the... Set list needed something, you know, when you were talking about like the first like few shows that they came back and played after the pandemic was, yeah, I mean, it's not over, but you know what I mean? The first couple of shows that, that finally like yeah. happened and they were like, you know, got off the ground. We talked, we talked to Cody for, uh, for, for the one show earlier in the year and you know, there wasn't really anything that was like new, you know what I mean? It was just like. So I, I do kind of feel like the set list like needed something. And I think I even said to Rory at one point, I don't think it was on the podcast, but it was like, hey, they need to go back and just get some old B-sides and bring them back to life. If there's not going to be any new, new songs, at least make it new to us, like new to the live, you know, experience. And they've done that. You know, they have injected that life into it. And then some, you know, I was nothing Cornbread Red, Can You Taste the Way? I mean, just like all of those ones that have like a new boing, you know, as simple yeah. and as and as corny as it is or whatever you want to call it, it's still something like fresh. You know what I mean? So they've definitely done that. And also, just like we mentioned, it, for these shows, they're they're just all over the place. And like, that's fun. That's cool. So it's like there's so many things to pull from and they are doing it. So that's fucking cool, man. You know, that's what they need to do. Totally. And and I mentioned it for the first night. They, It's like they took the number of commons for one night and spread it out over two. Because you still yeah. have, like, the roses are free and can't put my finger on it. You still have take me away. Totally. But, but they're not as many of them and they're far outnumbered by the, the rares and uncommons. Totally. You know, and I always already was mentioning some of the songs that I hadn't heard live in like 20 plus years and then also stay forever this is only the second time i ever heard that live so it was pretty awesome great shows man great shows well you know it's it's funny because i have to wonder how i'm pretty sure it's it's deaner that ultimately like makes up the set list right like mm-hmm. i've heard that a few times over the years so i have to wonder if he's doing a two night run or a three night run like how he maps things out i would have to imagine though that for night number two of a two night stint like this one Mm -hmm. night number two is just going to be like okay well as long as it wasn't played last night it's in like as long as it wasn't played the night before it counts Mm-hmm. So you can pretty much just start throwing out whatever as long as it wasn't played the previous night. Totally. And I think that's where this show, like, it just seemed to keep going. It just seemed to keep like, oh, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's just like a barrage of shit, you know? Dude, I was loving every minute of it, but it was like getting near the end being like man they just keep going and they just keep going <laughs> like fluffy was just blasting me away and then they still have uh i'm holding you you know like right well you definitely got your money's worth that's for sure <laughs> yeah dude and and you know as much as i'll say oh night number two maybe a little bit better i also just really view these as just parts one and part two of 
a combined thing. Sure. Well, okay. So there's something that I wanted to say and thinking about this, like the last few days, you know, I, again, like I hate to be like critical, but I just want to say how I feel and preach. I know this is going to be, well, this is coming from the knucklehead who didn't go or whatever, but I have to say, I respect Ween at the Philly Met. I respect the venue. I think it's a beautiful, like, old school theater. But I kind of feel like the Philadelphia area has gone from being, like, spoiled over the years because, you know, there was a lot of Ween shows for, like, Philly and New Jersey and, like, you know, New Hope and surrounding area and whatnot to kind of being a little, like, neglected. I just, I would like to see them do something different now. How about like a summer show for the Philadelphia area? You know? Yeah, I mean, it would be great for them to have more than one show in the Philly area in a year. And to be fair, they just had two and really a third one when you consider Maryland. Totally. I mean, that's that's local. That's kind of local for us as well. I could have, you know, could have made a trek for that. Yeah. So that's cool that they threw that one in there as well. Absolutely. That's actually probably not that far for you at all. But then, you know, it is a bummer because when I look at their upcoming shows and then also all the other shows from this year, there's just uh, there's a few they're just not quite close enough for me to like make the make the trip. And, and you know, there's a couple other places I forget exactly where they were, but but not quite close enough. And right. And it's just a bummer because uh, Philly for me is already pretty far. I'd love to see a show at the 930 Club in D.C. That's not too far Something like Richmond or something would be great. Like, come to the South, Ween, you know? Yeah, I mean, like, there just hasn't been anything really in, like, the summer for the Northeast. You know what I mean? Everything in the, like, spring and summer over the last, like, few years seems to be, like, the Midwest or... Yeah. You know, and it's just kind of like, hey, man, like, I want to go in the middle of summer, like... You know, what's the deal? Like, you know, I mean, even if they played the Met again, but it was like the spring or summer, I would much prefer that. You know, again, I'm not trying to be harsh or or, or too critical or anything, but it's just kind of like, I'd like to see something a little different. If it's, if, th- if this is a tradition, hey, that's cool. I'm not, you know, I'll take, it. but you know, I'm just throwing that out there. It's just how I feel. I'm just being honest. <sighs> Well, I think they were awesome. And, you know, the cool thing that that I, with the Met, is that every time I've been to see Ween there, I've been in a different, like, spot at the show. Now, these two nights I stayed in the same spot. But then the first show, I was, it was the pit, but back then they had seats. So the pit itself was actually a lot smaller back then. But we had seats on that level. And then the second time we were up in the Loge. Right. And then this time we were, I was down in the actual pit on the right, on the railing. So I do think it's cool that I've got to see it from different angles at that venue. Right. That's cool. And it, there's not, there's definitely not really an indoor venue of that size in Philly, except for that. So they definitely couldn't do like an indoor, uh, anywhere else in Philly, but there are definitely outdoor options. They could probably pull off. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not in the city, they could do anywhere in the, the Metro. I'm sure they will next year. I'm sure they'll work on on getting some Philly area summer shows. One of the things that jumps out at, at me as a thought would be the Man Music Center. Because I know that's like not as big as, you know, like what I still call the Tweeter Center or the, you know, the yeah. Camden E Center or whatever. Because that place is enormous. But like, you know, the, the, the Man Music Center is like a nice size, like not too big, not too small outdoor venue. Like that would be cool. You know. Yeah, I think it's bigger than it's definitely holds more than the Philly Met. But it's definitely on the smaller side for like the big amphitheaters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like something like that would be cool. Man, I, the last time I went to a show there was Dylan in like 98 or 99. Nice. I know, right? Wow. But yeah, dude, I think that's that about does it. Everyone, I hope you have a hi, uh, a great holiday and a happy new year. Yeah, if you're listening and you're still on here, thank you. It's awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Happy holidays. Please keep in touch. Drop us a line. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. 
at Weancast Podcast. Join us on Patreon. You know, we would just love to hear anything you have to say about these shows. Chime in if you were there or just about the podcast in general. And we just love you. Anyone who's listening to this, we love you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, and dude on the subway, who were you? Who are you? <laughs> and did you have a good time? Shout out to that guy for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. If you can t- get a hold of us, we'll like send you a sticker pack. You know, like whatever we got. <laughs> Seriously. I'll definitely hook that guy up. Does anyone have, has anyone gotten your Sound of Urchin thing yet? Maybe this guy can get it. If this guy hooks us up with his name, get a hold of us, guy. Oh, yeah, man. I got swag. I got swag we'll, for we'll you, We'll send dude. you swag. We'll send you some swag. <laughs> but anyway, yes, love be to everybody. And, um, you know, happy solstice. And have a good night. Happy holidays, everybody. Thank you so much. We love you.